Sunni Shia marriages, um, how do we tackle this in, in this uh, modern day that we're living in? You like sushi? I actually don't, but I know what you did there. <laughs> I know what you did there. Anyway, I know what you did um, there. so uh, <laughs> it's, it's sometimes referred to as sushi <laughs> marriages. Um, <clears throat> I don't like sushi, to be honest. My wife does, but uh, that's the food, not the marriages. <laughs> um, you see, we have to understand marriage is a beautiful institution. It's a wonderful process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. And it is recommended, but sometimes can become obligatory. If you're going to fall into sin, any form of sin, you have to get married. So people don't often know that. But anyway, when it comes to um, a society like W this society <clears throat> sorry and you know the various uh, range of different kind of people that we have mm -hmm. invariably we're going to uh, get to know people who are not necessarily part of our communities mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that has happened I personally have conducted quite a few um, Sunni Shia marriages the question however is are they going to work and are they practical we have to be honest and open about this and, and not just somehow be politically correct so to speak just for the sake of getting Muslims together and whatever the discussion about the um, Sunni Shia marriages I think should not be uh, dragged into the whole sectarian uh, debate because we have to remember what is sectarianism sectarianism is when you start to uh, enforce your beliefs over the other by inciting violence or hatred towards the others and sometimes you know people use terms without really understanding what they mean right mm -hmm. so in this current uh, this situation when we're talking about marriages between Sunnis and Shias we ask the question how is it going to work because they both have different sets of beliefs in reality and through uh, experience of dealing with uh, conflicts in these kind of marriages mm -hmm. the current generation differs to the older generation in this regard so mm. i'm an iraqi in iraq this used to happen quite frequently maybe 30 40 years ago where sunni marriages are a shia mm. and maybe in pakistan mm -hmm. as well but we've looked at the socio-political dynamics since then lots have changed lots i mean i know what happens in pakistan i was in karachi last year it was safe but it's still you know mm. volatile mm -hmm. between sunnis and shias it can erupt any minute similarly in iraq as well many places like syria and other places the the political situation is not necessarily harmonious between Sunnis and Shias because of so many attempts to try and uh, unfortunately create a rift between them. Why I'm saying this is because in this day and age, when you look at what the Sunni believes and the Shia believes, it's become much more evident due to YouTube and social media. Before maybe, mm -hmm. people didn't really know what the Sunni believes in and what a Shia believes in. Now it's become much clearer. Mm. And so what happens is it could be possible if they're both quite practicing and religiously adherent that they as a husband and wife would get into more conflict as a result of the differences in beliefs, in historical interpretations and a lot of other things. Uh, example, I had to deal with a case between a Sunni girl and a Shia boy. The Sunni girl took her children out and came out of the house. She didn't want to come back because she said to her husband that my children will have to fast on the day of Ashura. And the husband said, over my dead body. So what happens then? He called me and said, listen, I don't know what to do because she's we had a fight she's left the house etc what needs to happen before marriage if a sunni is thinking about a shia and a shia is thinking about sunni is full disclosure and a, a commitment in writing that i will not enforce my beliefs on you and you have to respect my beliefs as well and that's very hard by the way it's not easy for somebody who has <clears throat> sorry, reverence for certain individuals all their lives and all of a sudden now they attend majalis where these individuals are condemned or they are exposed and it hurts them, mm -hmm. you know, it hurts them because look, I've known these khulafa. How can you say that, for example, he pushed the door on Sayyida Fatima and he caused her baby to be miscarried? I won't accept that. That could create a, a, a conflict. Mm -hmm. That would create a problem between a husband and wife. And then there's the outer, the, the other families, the parents. They tend to also. The other problem is the children. Mm. How would the children pray? Like this 
or like this. How the, the performance of the prayers will always be different because they will see their father praying differently to their mother. Ultimately, because they're both practicing, there's going to be uh, a dichotomy and they're going to get confused. Mm. So based on all this and the different situations that we are uh, at the moment, I'm not of the individuals who do who recommends these kind of marriages now because I think they're much, much more difficult than they were before. They create much more problems, much more likelihood of uh, conflicts than uh, a, norm, a marriage between a Shia and a Shia or a Sunni and a Sunni. Uh, and, and that's why anybody approaching this has to think long and hard um, before committing to such a relationship. Totally agree. I feel like um, we live in a time where a lot of people will say, and I'm sure you've heard his blanket statement, you know, hundreds of times, but Sheikh, it doesn't matter. We're all Muslims, aren't we? Exactly. We pray to the yes. same God. We, yes. we have the same... Uh, same prophet. Same prophet. Same, same, Kaaba. same Kaaba. Yeah, same, yes. know, we, we, we both pray five <laughs> times a day, you know. It's just maybe you might do it like this and I might do it like that. Mm. But the truth is, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head, is um, if it is something that an individual or two individuals, <laughs> obviously two individuals that are trying to pursue, you need to have them uncomfortable conversations um, early on to avoid... Uh, you know, wider conflict, as you mentioned, you know, the individual who didn't want their uh, children to fast and then his, his, his spouse took the children away, etc. That's situations that we don't want to see in our communities, yeah. for sure. I want to add something, my dear brother Haider, because it's related to this and I feel passionate about this. Please, please. And that my is, and that is the there. idea of what is our identity, because I feel a youth and many people in the Western world specifically are going through an identity crisis. And that is because, you know, there's a lot of dilution of who we are. In reality, uh, you know, I'm proposing that it's not sectarian or antagonistic to other Muslims if an individual comes out, as you just said, and says very with pride and honor, with no, no, nothing against anyone else, that, look, I am Sunni, I am Shia. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. That's my identity. That's my beliefs. That's my life. That's my aqidah, mm -hmm. right? So ultimately, because, you see, if, if, if uh, two people... Um, uh, who I just mentioned earlier, they, they support different football teams, for example. <laughs> they get married, right? That's not their identity. That's a hobby. Mm. That's something that's on the side. Okay, they might have debates or discussions on the day where the two teams play or whatever. That That is something else. But you see, that doesn't govern their lives. That's not what the, the, you know they're, they're out there to do. So being a Shia or being a Sunni does govern your life, whether we like it or not. We have different jurisprudence. We have different aqidah when you go down deep into it, for example, right? So that will invariably, because I have a different identity, it will cause a cl clash. And I'm of those who is an advocate in this day and age for people to be honest and truthful about who they are rather than hide their beliefs and their feelings and their practices. Mm -hmm. I've been at university, right? So I was before, um, I, you know, I took on the, the, the world of mm -hmm. propagation. I was uh, an official registered drug dealer. Okay. Pharmacist. <laughs> before anyone takes that out of context, because they call them an official drug dealer, because <laughs> these are drugs we call them. Anyway, so I was a pharmacist. I was a practicing pharmacist, and I gr graduated from uh, University of London School of Pharmacy. So those four years at university really helped me. And those four years, I remember, you know, going to the prayer room, and <clears throat> the idea that, you know, she has feel a sense of, you know what, I can't use this turba. I can't use, I can't pray the way I want to. Why? We need to be now mm -hmm. in a situation whereby we have this diversity and inclusivity <clears throat> and embracing of each other. That's fine you're, that you're different. I'm not going to judge you because you're different. I'm not going to condemn you because you're Sunni or because you're Shia or you're Brevli or you're Diobandi or Ithna Ashari or Zaidi. That's who you are, mm -hmm. right? I can have a discussion with you. I'm entitled to present my opinion. Mm -hmm. But the silencing of opinions is also wrong. That's today, for example, there are people who say, we are living in a difficult time, so we should not discuss historical events in a calm, respectful manner. I disagree with that. I think it's fine, it's healthy to come and look at these things. If it hurts me, if someone discusses something academically, there's something wrong with me. 
Mm-hmm. As long as I'm not insulting and being, you know, uh, disrespectful in the sense that I'm using derogatory terms. But if I'm discussing history and my narrative of history, allow me to discuss it. I am free. Mm-hmm. You are free as well. I'll hear your side. You hear my side. But that doesn't mean that I am sectarian or fighting you. I can be sitting with you and having lunch with you and praying with you. Mm-hmm. And we are having difference of opinion. And that's okay. And that's how the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him and his family, dealt with things. That's why our imams dealt with things. They sat with atheists. They sat with agnostics. They sat with people with different beliefs. Mm. And they had debates with them. Mm. No problem. Mm. That's how we should live in, in, the, in the idea of respect and dialogue. Mm. That should be no, the no. focus. Totally agree.